All right, today we're gonna to talk about patty pan squash. It's one of my favorite crops to grow, but it's also one of the things that I grow the least of. I'll tell you exactly why that is coming up next on The Urban Farmer. When I say patty pan squash, what I'm really referring to is summer squash. So zucchinis, yellow and green zucchinis, and these little guys. The varieties that I grow, and I've done a lot of them over the years, I've done the crooknecks, I've done the different colored patty pans, I've done funky zucchinis, I've done a lot of them. And I've boiled down to three, which are the ones that are my favorite, and it's these guys here. So the, it's a yellow zucchini, this is a sunburst, that's the name of the variety, and this zucchini is called raven. And I'm sure everybody's got what works best for them, but that's what I grow, and this is the ones that I like the most. Um, basically, as far as the patty pans go, the sunbursts, the reason I like them above a lot of the other types of patty pans, so the the courgette or the, the, the baby summer squash. The reason I like that one the best is the plant is small. It stays static, it occupies very little space and um, it's the most productive. There's many different types out there. Like there's some, I had, I've done so many of them but there was one I did last year which was supposed to be a variation on a variety called, um, what was it called? Uh, Peter Pan. And the Peter Pan was a similar to the Sunburst, like this plant here, but it, it's a, it, uh, it grows like a winter squash, so the plant keeps getting bigger and bigger, and I hate that because for myself as an urban farmer, I have a limited amount of space. And so there was one called Benning's Green Tint that was a, a variation on the Peter Pan, which was no long, wasn't available last year. And the fruit looked exactly the same. It was like a Sunburst, like this one. But it's a light green, which is which is attractive. It's nice. It tastes great, but the plant is huge, and it wasn't worth wasn't worth it for me in that regard. So, anyways, I've boiled it down to these th three varieties. These are my favorite. Interested to know what you guys grow? Uh, put those in the comments below. But uh, so patty pans are a crop that I grow less and less of each year, and the reason is is simply for the obvious reason that you can see here is they occupy a lot of space, and they are what I call a bi-rotation crop or a steady crop. They go in bi-rotation areas. The only reason they're in this area, this plot is what I consider high rotation. Each of these beds be rotated multiple times a season. But the reason I've got them on this plot is because this year the landowner said, you know what, let's don't even, ha they wanted to have a lawn here. She said, let's not even bother. So I put patty pans here knowing that they might want to get that lawn area back ready in the fall. So normally I'd, I might have these somewhere else, but generally I like to have these types of crops close to where I am because they require so much consistent picking. And since I'm focusing on a, a baby type crop, which I can sell at a higher price per pound, anywhere between four and five dollars a pound. I have to pick them every single day, especially from now. So we are about mid-June right now. We are exactly mid-June right now. From now until September, I'll be picking these every single day. I'll just come out here, scan around, pick the ones that are ready, come back the next day and do the same thing. Most of them will get sold at the end of the week, but we gotta pick them consistently to get them at that right size. And, um, so I grow less and less of these each year because of the, the, the land real estate. And I'm basically at a point where these, with these where I only wanna, I wanna have enough that I always sell them. In the past, I always have too much in the summer. Like they're, they're scarce around now, at it, like late spring, early summer. And then they become way too abundant in the summer that every other farmer has them and you can't move them and you're picking for nothing. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do work on my farm that doesn't have a measurable return. This is one thing I always talk about is focus on the tasks that pay. Focus on the things that have a measurable return. And if you're going out and picking summer squash and you got 50 pounds that you can't sell, you just did an hour or two of work that is unpaid. So that's a cost. And so I always... I, I keep reducing the amount for this reason. I want to sell them so that they're always sold. I want to grow them so that they're always sold. And basically the way it is for me at this time of year is it's sort of a lottery. Whoever, whichever one of my customers orders first and they want say 30 pounds of patty pans, you got them. 
they're all yours. And I tell people that on my fresh sheet that they're limited in their volume. It's first come first serve basis. I'd rather be a little bit short than have too much that I can't sell. Because if I'm short and I can't, and, and, and I've got, uh, I'm not meeting the order, that doesn't cost me anything. It might cost me some potential future lost sales, but in the, in the immediate um, situation, it doesn't cost me anything. Whereas having an abundance of something that I can't sell costs me labor. So I don't want that. So the way we plant these is they're 18 inches apart, single row. They're three foot centers from center to center. They're three foot. We do them tighter than most people do. And in about a month time, we have to really walk through here carefully. We wear pants and long sleeves and we have to just kind of man, like, you know, push our way through a jungle. But that's the way I like to do them. It gives them enough space to grow, um, but it makes them, you know, a little bit more difficult to pick later in the season. But that's okay by me. I'm willing to sacrifice that so that I can concentrate this into an area, um, a smaller area. And so my strategy with patty pans is I put them in areas where I wouldn't normally have beds. I put them between my greenhouses like you saw with the zucchinis. And, um, you know, they're, they're a low maintenance crop once they're set up. I landscape fabric everything and we have holes in the fabrics. We use the same fabrics each year. These are all three foot wide fabrics and they, they overlap with each other in the walkways. And then we have holes every 18 inches with drip irrigation underneath. So it's really low maintenance. All we have to do is harvest them. There's no other maintenance that needs to be done besides things like picking off the, uh, the bad ones here and there. But that's basically patty pans. So the key to growing them profitably is growing a smaller variety and picking them often, opposed to the big ones. But you know, there's gonna be times where they, they slip, you know, I'm right here I can go and look. Here's one. That's like the biggest I want. That's, that's almost too big. And if I find too many of these uh, for a picking, I'll charge a different price point. I'll sell them for cheaper than the smaller ones. But I'm looking for the tiny, the tiny ones. I want a zucchini. And this is an optimal size zucchini. It's about four and a half, five inches. And what restaurants will often do is they'll slice that into maybe half inch slices. And it pairs well with a patty pan squash like this size. Whereas they might serve that thing whole or sliced in half. Um, paired up with zucchinis like this. It makes a nice vegetable medley. Just picking my zucchinis. And um, when I'm picking them, I clip them off just so I don't break them at the stem. Because I am picking a smaller zucchini. I just wanted to show you guys something that I always do when I'm picking zucchinis, it's just sort of a management thing, is you see these kind of things? These kind of miscolored or misshapen, crappy looking zucchinis or patty pans on a plant. Remove those right away because they're, I know there's a reason why they're like that. I don't know what that reason is, but if you leave that on, the plant is gonna put energy into growing a, a piece of fruit that you're never gonna use. So I always take them off and uh, get them to focus their energy on the ones that I want to grow. So I, I've always found over the years, and I'm no plant expert, I'm no botanist, just a farmer, but I've always found that with zucchinis, the first few fruits are always kind of misshapen and miscolored like that. I don't know why it is. I'm sure some online expert out there knows, but um, I always pick them off because then you know, the, the ones that come after always seem to be better. So that's just my kind of basic strategy for it. So that's patty pans, guys. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. If you want to see more stuff like this, please hit the subscribe button right now. Like and share them with your friends. And check out my online course, ProfitableUrbanFarming.com and my book at TheUrbanFarmer.co. And if you want to make a donation to the show, it's always appreciated. And thank you to those of you that do. You can do that at TheUrbanFarmer.co support. All right, we'll see you soon.